for game. I love the heat when it's on my back. <laughs> There's an old Irish expression that says, may the sun always be at your back and the road rise up to meet you and yada yada. But there's a certain truth to that, too, you know, is that there's two ways, maybe more, there could be lots of ways to look at what you're facing and what you're going through or where you're at and what you have and what you're doing. You know, you could sit down and say, oh, man, it just isn't fair, you know, people have so much more than me or... Wow, look at how much I have compared to some who don't have any at all. Because it's really a matter of perspective, is that you can, like they say, count your blessings, the fact that you're alive and you woke up today and you said, wow, thank you God for another day alive. And then everything else is just an added blessing. Or you could look on it as, oh man, not another day. Oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. What's your day like? I don't see my day as being, oh my gosh, I gotta do, as much as, Lord, what are you going to do? Cool. And when I think about that, you know, I, I have things that I plan on and I go ahead and say, you know, I'm going to, you know, Lord willing, I'm going to go do this. And then when the Lord isn't willing, I just go, well, okay, I guess I shouldn't be doing this. Or if I do go ahead and maybe plan on something and I start on that direction, my wife knows and she used to get frustrated about it and doesn't anymore, but if it seems as though I'm heading the wrong direction, that suddenly I'm going down that path and I think, you know, it just doesn't feel like God is in this. I stop. I say, okay, you know, change of plans. Let's stop. Consider where we're at. Consider where we could be and consider what the Lord would say about this. And You know, I take the time to reconsider my plans and my, my direction, and I go, um, honey, let's just go home. You know, I don't, I don't feel right about this. And she takes that as a genuine direction for the Lord. You know, she'll pray, but she'll go along with it, and we'll head home, and who knows? There may have been something that would have happened had we been continuing on in that direction. Be yielded to God like that. Be open to His sudden changes or variableness. He doesn't change, but He changes our direction and our perspective because we can look on it as being God changed His mind, which some people think that the Scripture writes that and it's contradictory. No, He doesn't change His mind. He wants you heading in that direction, so He has to tell you something, and then He changes your direction because that timing is not right for you. So to get your timing right and to be pointed in the right direction is the best we can do and then we need to yield and listen along the way as God directs us his way his purposes and his plans otherwise <laughs> you're taking your own shortcut and I ain't following <laughs> in Spurgeon sanctify them through thy truth Sanctification mean, begins in regeneration. The Spirit of God infuses into man that new living principle which, by which he becomes a new creature in Christ Jesus. This, works, this work, which begins in the new birth, is carried on in two ways. Mortification, whereby the lusts of the flesh are subdued and kept under, and vivification, vivi, 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 Vivification, yeah, vivification, vivification, by which the life which God has put within us is made to be a well of water springing up to everlasting life. This is carried on every day in what is called perseverance, by which the Christian is preserved and continued in a gracious state and is made to abound in good works unto the praise and glory of God. And it culminates or it comes to perfection in glory. When the soul, being thoroughly purged from its flesh, is caught up to dwell with holy beings at the right hand of God Almighty. 
But while the Spirit of God is thus the author of sanctification, yet there is a visible agency employed which must not be forgotten. Sanctify them, said Jesus, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The passages of Scripture which prove that the instrument of our sanctification is the word of God are very many. That means the Bible. The Spirit of God brings to our minds the precepts and the doctrines of truth and applies them with power. These are heard in the ear, being received in the heart, and they work in us to will and to do of God's good pleasure. The truth is the sanctifier, and if we do not bear, if we do not hear or read the truth, we shall grow, not grow in sanctification or being set apart. We only progress in sound living as we progress in sound understanding. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do not say of any error, it is merely a matter of opinion. <laughs> no man indulges in error of judgment without sooner or later tolerating an error in practice. Hold fast the truth, for by so holding the truth shall you be sanctified by the Spirit of God. You know, that's something that I've always held to and I always believed in is that, you know, whatever you're doing, be truthful, be honest, be real with God. He already knows, he already sees, and he already understands, and he's already said what he would do about it. But sometimes we need to be reminded of what the truth is. So in order to get rid of all this programming that goes on in our mind, from everything we take in and hear and consider in our own thoughts, we need to be reprogrammed. We need to be rethought processed through so that we would know what fact is from what fancy is, what truth is from what opinion is. Because most of the time what you hear with your ears right now, out there in the world and everywhere, whether in church or whether in Sunday school or whether in the internet or any place that you are, is opinion. Pure and simple. It's opinion and perspective. It's a person's opinion and perspective. Pop. It's pop Christianity. Personal Christianity is you sitting down with God reading his word and finding out what it says, doing what it says, and obeying what it says. That's truth, pure and simple. You can have pop Christianity all you want to, but guess what? Unless it's personal, it ain't real. <laughs> and if it isn't real, it isn't truth.